It's an honor to be here representing the Boeing Company, and I'm also here as a parent of, of two high schoolers, uh, which we know is, can be challenging. Where do they go? Yeah, uh, where, where, I'll talk about them later. But okay. the, um, <laughs> the, uh, the opportunity we have here today is really to connect the arts with the business, and it may not be intuitively obvious with uh, aerospace. Uh, my department is what we call a 24-7 operations center. It's a hospital for your broken airplanes, and we make house calls as well. And so when we get inquiries from... Where is it exactly? It's in Seal Beach. In Seal Beach. Okay. Yeah. It's, right. And Boeing's made a significant investment in California. And one of the advantages we have in Seal Beach is the proximity to not only engineering schools, but artistic schools. Mm. And uh, the mentoring we talked about earlier is, is key in that area. So we're supporting the world, a 24-7 operation of largely technical people, engineers with degrees, and some non-degreed people as well. And so, you know, it's a culturally diverse uh, workforce we have supporting people around the world. And our customers are looking for value-added solutions that are not always engineering in the STEM world. And so connecting the aerospace with the arts may, may be a little bit difficult, but if you think in terms of the Boeing picture here, the 787, this is the art of what is possible. And before this aircraft was engineered, it was imagined. And so, you know, it's key to understand that what happened when, when the 787 was engineered and built, some of these technologies didn't exist when it was imagined. It created new manufacturing technologies and innovation. The lighting is very unique, and it's LED lighting, very energy efficient, doesn't produce a lot of heat, lasts a long time, but it also creates a much different visual appearance to the flying public, and the demands of the flying public have changed over the decades. We've learned a lot about what passenger comfort is important, and also, if you think in terms of windows have gotten larger, you no longer have the pull-down window shade, so it's no longer an all-or-nothing. They dim electrically. And I would have liked that as I was flying up the coast last night and the sun was beating on the left side of the airplane and I couldn't open the window shade without blinding myself. But I think the most important wonderful thing is bigger bag racks. We they envisioned the use of the space. <laughs> These poor folks all flew southwest. So. Yeah. <laughs> And Southwest is one of our best customers, and we love them. All right. <laughs> but the, this was imagined with a different visualization of the use of the space, but it had to go be engineered. Not only do you have more capacity, but you have more headroom, so you don't bump your head as much, and it's a much more visually appealing. The cabin is larger and therefore more comfortable. And also the cabin is operated at a lower flying altitude with higher humidity, so it's less fatiguing on the flying public as well as the crew. And the engines are more efficient and environmentally friendly. And at the end of the day, the airplane's recyclable, which is you know, important for all of us in California. But what's important about this airplane is that it was the blending of soft skills and engineering skills. But it was a project, a global project that was designed in many places around the world. And I learned project management doing a stage manager job for guys and dolls when I was 13. <laughs> that is the best musical. But it, it really represents what the arts were to me as a younger person 40 years ago in school and what I learned in the way of project management, which I could transcend into the business. But my operations center is like a theater. It's live audience, um, but they don't laugh when we make mistakes, when we leave hundreds of people stranded or tons and tons of freight for biomedical customers behind because we have failed to serve our customer. The feedback is immediate, and how we deal with that you know, can affect the economy of our, of our customers. And... Um, I had a large European customer in our office yesterday giving a tour and I was demonstrating how we're teaching people how to write in the technical world that makes sense across cultural borders. And this gentleman who's from Central Europe just looked at me and laughed. He's got the same problem at his airline. So the problems are universal no matter where the borders are. And I think it's also too important as Boeing comes up on its 100th birthday next year that we reflect on Bill Boeing who saw an air show as a kid and, and said, I want to build airplanes. And part of the reflection there is to recognize what got Boeing here is not, is, is not going to get us to where we want to go in, in the future. We have to look at it differently. And that comes from our leaders, the artists, and the engineers who can innovate, collaborate, yes, do that dreaded teamwork stuff, and think on their feet. I use the MacGyver reference frequently that a lot of the solutions are not ones that are intuitively obvious to blend the engineering with the arts and think of, well, this is what the customer asked, but is that really what they need or want? Is that of value to them? To help them to a different solution right. is key. It's not just two plus two in the STEM world. is interpreting what the customer needs and trying to come up with a creative solution that maybe no one's thought of. And so the other thing, 
that is important is there's a school in uh, outside Massachusetts called the Franklin Hall Institute. They've written a book called The Whole New Engineer, and it focuses on this innovation, how to create excitement with engineering. And it, it talks about the creativity and the bond to unleash the creativity we saw as kids, as fourth graders flying on airplanes for the first time, that gets suppressed when you don't have arts education, particularly in middle school and in high school. As I mentioned, I have two kids in high school. My son is heavily involved in the drama department at the Los Alamitos High School, both on stage, behind stage. So he's learning that stage manager thing and managing actors who have egos from time to time. <laughs> and, and my daughter is in the uh, show choir there. And what they're both learning also is you have to work with people you may not like, and they may not like you. And if you don't participate in organized sports at the high school level. It sounds like the legislature. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to go there, but I'll let you comment on that. <laughs> and those are important lessons, particularly for kids who, who don't participate in organized sports. And uh, so the, the theater, performing arts in particular, is an avenue for people to participate in those team sports and get that big game preparation that you might not get if you don't play football or baseball or basketball. And it creates a team uh, environment that is important. Pete Carroll of the Seahawks, and when his team was 3-3, three and three, he pulled all the veterans together. And he said, you know, you're playing like a team, but you're not playing for each other. And the theater and the performing arts, it teaches people to play for each other, much like the Marine Corps doctrine. And the other thing that's noticeable is from an academic perspective in the prior panel that uh, academics improve with the arts, and civic participation is substantially higher for kids that participate in the arts. And the last point I'll make as an employer is I've done hundreds of behavioral interviews, that structured behavioral interview we all love, and I can tell people who come in with strong resumes whether or not they've had communication skills, will they fall flat at the interview, the people that have the communication skills that they learned in the arts do much better in those interviews and are much more employable and much more promotable. Sure. As I mentor people today, it's clear that what's missing in their thought process until I whack them on the side of the head is you need to think beyond the engineering skills and get in terms of communication and think differently. And I appreciate all that you're doing and championing this stuff. We're all in this together. Boeing is very committed to the arts. Uh, both uh, as an employer and as an advocate in the community. And I appreciate it, and thank you very much for having me here today. Thank you.